The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advise professionals, stay on top of tech trends and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. This podcast is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Imagine a world where wealth technology is simplified. With Australia's number one platform for overall satisfaction and value, you don't need to imagine. NetWealth is continually investing in new tools and platform features to optimize your staff productivity and to give you and your clients the best user experience. With our managed accounts functionality, bring new efficiency and scale to your investment operations. A world of technology awaits. Discover it at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. Rated by Investment Trends number one for overall satisfaction by users from 2014 to 2022. To give listeners of the Advice Tech Podcast another avenue to solve technology problems that matter most and efficiently evaluate the landscape of advice tech providers, Ensemble has launched an advice tech space on its platform. If you want to know how your advice peers are solving their tech challenges, big and small, it's the place to go. Head to the Ensemble platform or use the link in the show notes to join today. Today, we're talking getting rid of the heavy lifting and focusing on high value service areas with Madeline Debney, Chief Product Officer and Co-Founder at Otto Finance. So Otto is a lot of things from an AI fact finding and reporting assistant to an end-to-end engagement system with client calls hosted inside the platform. But what's really exciting is Maddie's passion to level up both the advisor and client experiences when using tech and their location agnostic. Important to note, shortly after recording this episode, Patrick Patrick became unwell and lost his voice. So if you haven't picked up on this already, this is an AI generated text to speech recreation of his or my, sorry, even I'm confused now, voice using our podcasting tech, Riverside FM. Um, To be fair, this is definitely a sign of what's to come, especially as Maddie talks about AI avatars, as well as Otto being backed by Sequoia Capital, who are probably also investors of the AI model used to recreate my voice. I I mean, Patrick Patrick started by asking Maddie what um, the oldest piece of tech she still owns is and whether she still uses it. I feel like the oldest piece of tech that I use is the interface in my car. I feel that cars really need to focus on, car makers need to focus on on making cars. Clearly, they're not good at uh, user interfaces and software. And all I wish is it would just integrate into my phone and I could use my phone instead. That's such a great response. That's awesome. I'm totally with you. It's just... Shocking. And a lot of them try to go their own way. Like instead of, I don't know, I'm not sure if you're an iPhone user, but Apple CarPlay seems to be pretty good, but I'm totally with you. That's a a great answer. And I guess as we sort of move into, um, you know, second question around AI, that would be fantastic to see some AI stuff in vehicles, but is there maybe one or two ways that you're using AI either personally or in your work life? Yeah. I mean, I use it all the time. I have the chat GPT Mac plug-in so I literally press like oh, yeah. uh, command uh, space and it pops up and I use it for everything even I had to write some uh, new copy about a login page which is pretty standard but actually copywriting is especially with a new X is it's really challenging to be um, to have some form of sort of personality to be succinct to be exact and I found it immensely immensely helpful for that but I was, I mean, yesterday I was watching, listening to this podcast and it's amazing what people use it for. So somebody was using it um, as a therapist to give her advice on how not to take negative feedback so personally. 
Um, so I, I really love it when you see other people and how they use um, AI. I thought that was um, a great um, example. But yeah, I'm using it more and more at work. I really like Notebook. Um, and um, I'm quite excited about the avatar um, stuff as well, because that's really, really um, gaining traction in terms of, uh, of quality. Um, and because we are speaking to financial advisors, I think part of what I want to do is to kind of bring the future and show what is possible. Even if you don't want to use an avatar now, for example, it's nice to know what other industries are doing and, and where things are going. Totally. No, I think that's a great um, viewpoint around sort of using it for objectivity around that negative feedback example. And I think you mentioned, is it Notebook uh, LM, where you can bring in a truckload of content from whatever source, might be a website or document or just pasting text, and then it can actually create like a short form podcast. And I've found that a really interesting way to yeah. like hear my own ideas said in a different way what have, have you sort of had any experience with that yeah I, can see it. I think the podcast I, I'm curious of how the podcast element will progress because we're already saturated with that kind of content but it is much more interesting yeah. to me that way than a, a written article um, so I wonder whether there'll be sort of an evolution within the podcast space to have more kind of educational podcasts that people know are not live personalities and then you have the slightly different more like live personality um format as well but all of this is just amazing and it, it makes everything so much more accessible and that's when you get the creatives in who have, have these different ideas who can really help progress it i'm with you yeah i think accessibility is huge and that's one of the big benefits of of what we're seeing with ai and i'm totally with you with the podcast stuff too like even being able to basically get what you want, like in the way that you want to be, I don't know, spoken to or or consume media. I think that's really um, exciting as well. I'm really excited to dive into Otto, Maddie. But before we do, do you mind sort of taking us through your professional origin story and how that has actually led you to Otto? Yes. Oh, just one more AI product that I really like is the Google Lens. <laughs> I don't know if you've okay. used that before. I use it professionally and personally. Uh, personally, I'm a bit of an online shopper. And so if I see an outfit that I like, I use that to search and find what the, what the item is. And then professionally, I use it because we've been um, featured in, Otto has been featured in, um, or featured in the Excel Euroscape report. And we saw one uh, page of this report, but it didn't have a any reference. So we didn't know who was talking about us. And then I used the Google Lens and I used that to find it, which is really useful. So it's a bit like having a spy working for you kind of. Um, helping you find the very, origin very cool. um, of things. And I guess talking about origin, so I started my career at Fidelity. I was there um, for over seven years, mainly focused on building digital products. I was also in the fintech team. And during that time, I just saw how challenging it was to innovate within a large incumbent. There was incredible people, incredible talent there, tons of resource. But there's just natural constraints that make it um, hugely problematic. And in tandem, during that time, I started running an investment community for my friends, my broader network, because I basically saw the consequence of that lack of innovation where advice was really inaccessible. It was really expensive. It didn't feel like it was speaking to the next generation of wealth clients. So uh, it was a sort of dichotomy I found myself in building you know, investment products, but also seeing a group of people that really didn't have anywhere to go to get uh, better financial care. I left uh, Fidelity to pursue an MBA and I, I was a consultant at VCG because I wanted to get kind of broader technology exposure, especially into banking, which is always a, a bit of um, an early adopter of new technology. But I was still trying with ideas, building very basic bots actually at that time. And then I thought, no, this is what I want to do with my with my time. And so I raised uh, money from uh, from a VC fund and started Otto. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. That's um, there's a long time at a big institution and I imagine it would have been so like freeing and so exciting to go from that to where you are now. So do you mind sort of talking a little bit more about what Otto is and I guess a bit more about the problems that it's solving? Yes. Yeah, so the wealth management space, financial advice space is in this really interesting period of flux and change. So you have this huge wealth transfer of 5.5 trillion occurring in the next five years, shifting down to the next generation of wealth users. 
you have um, also an age transfer, right? One in five financial advisors is, is looking to retire. These older institutions have built up you know, a lot of their, their clients and they're, they're seeing their clients passing and, uh, and moving their, their wealth to the next generation. You see their advisors wanting to, to retire as well. And then you also, on top of that, have regulation um, coming in, making it much harder to operate, more expensive to operate, a lot more granularity is needed around the service that you're providing to your clients. And these clients obviously have different customer expectations. I think it's crazy. I mean, I have Revolut, for example, when I travel. So maybe I have £100 in Revolut. And I have considerably more of my wealth manager. However, my online experience of Revolut is 100x that of my wealth manager, right? In terms of accessibility, insight, speed, um, design. Then on top of that, you now have AI. And that completely changes the game, right? In terms of what technology you can bring to the wealth and advisory space. So at Otto, we're looking to tackle that. Like The big goals that we're looking to help the advisors with is around uh, the client to advisor ratio, support staff to advisor ratio, and also really critically, the client experience. And we do that in two ways. One is that we have a white labeled end client portal. So imagine if Google, Tesla, Revolut built an end client portal, what would it look like? That's the goal of what we're we're trying to build and the the ambition of the, the user experience and the data that we have to fulfill that. But that's just the almost like the hygiene factor because we don't understand why better client portals don't exist. What we're doing that's going to really shift the needle for the advisors is the advisor platform. Now, the advisor platform is effectively a co-pilot, uh, AI digital power planner, a third hand for the advisors, and it supports them on every step of the client journey. So onboarding, as you know, Super lengthy, very manual, poor experience for the advisor and the client. We're automating that process, bringing AI in and drastically speeding it up. Then you have client but management. So advisors having to manage 150, well, in a few years' time, maybe they're going to have to manage 300, 500 clients. You want to need more than an Excel to be asked to do that. So helping the advisors like get to grips with their client book. What's the so what? You wake up today, who do you need to talk to and what do you need to talk to them about? The next is around that kind of interaction point. So we have a meeting assistant and this goes from the whole life cycle of a meeting. So reminders, scheduling, um, meeting prep, hosting, summarization, actions, the whole circle we manage and automate for the advisors. Report generation is another one. So we're focused on the sort of annual suitability report, but building that out further. And then there's um, the communication um, assistant. So that's building the client email. So we've, you know, understood today you need to target, talk to these five clients about a change in uh, inheritance tax. Let's say we actually will write that communication for you. And the way that we've built it is a in a agentic, as a technical term, but in a kind of more um, easy to understand term, an assistant manner. So you have an assistant that can manage you with, um, that can effectively act as like a, a power planner for each of those different areas within um, your your workflow. Very cool. Thank you for that comprehensive overview. I think a few points that you said there I'll pick up on, like the the expectation of granularity, like advisors expected to be on top of absolutely everything at any time, uh, the online experience side of things, like in terms of uh, the lack of insights and the, the poor design sort of links probably back to your example of car tech. Um, and also the yeah clearly the client to advisor ratio at a bare minimum and then AI on top of that like all of that is just coming together to solve a real problem or problems and it really is clear that like you you're working on on a great client experience but a great um, sorry a great online experience rather where you might look great and be able to do a lot of things but if you've still got a reactive advisor on the other end of that it's probably not a winning combo but if you can add AI which turns that into something that is proactive, I think that is a, win- a winning um, formula. It's it's really exciting. Do you, I mean, are there any similar offerings out there, do you feel, or are you pioneering in this space? What sort of category would you say Otto is sitting in? 
Yeah, I mean, there's obviously sort of micro competitors in terms of uh, feature, but I think the way that we see it is we want to be this client interaction layer. So that is unique in itself. And and having both the client side and the advisor side is critical for us, right? Because it means that we can really own that whole um, interaction and, and optimize it for both the audiences. What I find really strange about advisor technology, especially the older stuff, is it's not built for usability. It's not built to be a great experience for an advisor. And if you come from a tech landscape, usability and, and, and customer experience is bread and butter, right? Like it's it's uh, the, the first thing on the mind of any product manager. So that is um, obviously the key to us. But my prediction of what's going to happen, and I think it's, I mean, it's already happened for advisors and it's really challenging for them, is that you get these point solutions for everything. For, I mean, even Calendly, for example, is, is, you know, calendar scheduling, meeting scheduling is a point solution. And that leads into Zoom. And then that leads into a cash flow forecaster. And maybe it's a meeting transcription tool. And then what, before you know, you have, you know, 10, 15, 20 supporting micro solutions that have data silos that don't connect, that have security issues. And you don't get this kind of comprehensive ecosystem. And that's exactly what Otto is building. Yes, we have incredible meeting summarization. We have templates. But the so what of that means that we have all that client data in one place. It's connected to your CRM. And guess what? It's linked to the client book management. It's linked to the comms uh, generation. It's linked to the report generation. And that's what's really going to move the needle because in, you know, in, in a few years' time, it'll be really automating those workflows and the advisor will be like the captain of the ship authorizing uh, content or making decisions they're not going to be sort of in the <laughs> in, in the bottom and like in the titanic you know shoveling coal into uh, a furnace totally with you and yeah really um comforting to know that it's not just australia that has that problem of sort of text stacks scattered everywhere and yeah tools like calendly etc just being a point solution and i mean you've really touched on challenges that are common both in the Australian market and obviously the UK around, you know, the inter- intergenerational wealth transfer, increased regulation, reducing advisor numbers, um, the consolidation through PE and M&A and the advice gap and, you know, minimal investable assets, all that sort of thing. And you've explained that it really is becoming or it is an end-to-end engagement platform. I mean, are there businesses out there running Otto as their sole or main piece of financial planning and wealth tech? And in terms of Day to day, like who's using it? Is it advisors and their clients are also supporting team members? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I mean, I think the Australian market is uh, an incredible one. I, I lived in Australia for some time, and um, apart from being an incredible place to work and to live, there are obviously um, quite a lot of similarities with uh, with the UK um, in terms of who's using the product. So yes, it is. Um, the the place where the advisors can can, can go and conduct um, majority of their um, sort of client facing uh, workflows. Obviously, the goal in time is for that to expand. We still are a startup, right? We're still in our infancy, and uh, I should say we're backed by Sequoia, so we have huge, huge ambitions of what this can become. And you can use a lot of fancy words, you know, the wealth operating system and all that, but this. So uh, Otto will be the platform where the advisor can go on to and they can say, okay, what do I need to do today? And then they can carry out those actions. And it will be a very simplistic, easy interface to do that. In. And that I'm sure of, and that's going to, you know, the, the industry will change in, in that sense. And I think part of it is also like, like you touched upon the PE consolidators, right? They have, we work with quite a few of them and they have huge ambitions and huge appetite for new technology. And that's fantastic because it helps sort of permeate it into the industry. They can be the early adopters and tease out any issues and then it enables um, other advisors to be able to really benefit from that um, innovation and that they've sort of enabled. Yeah, I'm totally with you. And I think in terms of, you know, that sort of bionic experience where, you're building something where it is that, you know, the co-pilot experience. And you mentioned before around having that sort of desktop version of, of chat GPT or equivalent. And you might have seen, I think it was this week, Claude, so by Anthropic, with a couple of demos on, 
YouTube, where they were using their new tool, very similar called computer use, where you're essentially just outsourcing control of your device to it. And one example was referred to as orchestrating tasks. So it was working out the logistics of you know when and where to catch the sunrise in San Francisco. So it was doing Google searches and checking maps, et cetera. But my question would be, if you've built a, a co-pilot and the rate of change, you've mentioned just now backed by Sequoia. So obviously you've got access to incredible tech people, I guess, just resources. But my question would be, if you build a co-pilot, do you think we'll get to a point where an advisor actually isn't required, like actually skipping that co-pilot step? Like it's starting to feel like we're getting closer, at least for simple tasks. Yeah, I mean, firstly, the connection with Sequoia for us is incredible because the rate of change, I mean, uh, Silicon Valley is the hub of AI innovation. That is very, very clear. And it's not just the raw technology that matters here. It's the usability and bringing people on the journey. And they've done that first as well. So we're able to learn from that. I think if you look at Harvey AI in the legal space, Nabla in the med tech space, you can see how AI has really permeated these industries that are similar to us in the sense that it's highly regulated, you know, zero appetite for um, for risk in that sense. And they're doing... They're doing incredibly well. I think the broader question is, and, and this is what I've learned so much with finance, especially any finance that touches uh, the, the consumer, right, is it is such an emotional, emotive, complex topic. People really, really value that that human interaction. So my opinion of, of where it will go will be that the advisors will really be focused on those meetings and relationships with their clients but it will be all um and the back office will be highly automated so for example if i had a annual client review meeting and during that meeting for whatever reason the client's risk appetite changed firstly could the ai help the advisor to really understand the risk appetite by you know tone of tone of voice and kind of um emotional cues it could pick up but more simply than that, let's just say that the risk appetite has decreased and therefore that would trigger portfolio rebalancing. Now, that that portfolio rebalancing could be simply triggered by that client call, right? Right now, the advisor has to go away. They have to summarize the call. They have to talk to their power planners. They, you know, it is an immensely time-consuming um, workflow just to do that, but it could be instantaneous. And I think that will be the kind of... Uh, next future state to operate in i do think that there will be spin up propositions depending on the client's um size of investable assets and complexity that might lend itself to a more of an automated service a bit like the robo advice kind of um (laughs) revolution or attempted revolution it could be the next era of that because Again, I don't think um, the whole industry appreciates just how low the general level of financial literacy um, and engagement is. I remember when I was running this investment network, um, and this is when all the robos were just coming out. I took the the network through one of them that was in the UK. It's like this is like a cool kind of like benchmark to easily start investing. Let's talk about it. Like, what do you think? And um, there was a defensive portfolio, um, like a aggressive to defensive, as like the spectrum. And one of the attendees of this session I was running was like, "So is that invested in tanks and guns?" I was like, "No, but fair enough." I mean. If you haven't been taught kind of basic concepts of active, passive, risk and return, portfolio diversification, aggressive versus defensive you know, um, portfolios, then it's a completely logical, fair question. And, and, and that kind of that you really do need a human element at, at some degree to help with. And yeah, totally with you. So, I mean, Maddie, do you mind sort of taking us through a little bit more? You've given us a great overview so far, but maybe some more sort of key functions of Otto and maybe some specific tasks or insights that Otto helps with that might be time intensive or complex without the use of AI? Yeah, I'd love to. So I think the three hero features of our platform at the moment, and I say at the moment because we, our rate of development and releases is it's pretty extraordinary. So uh, things change pretty fast. But there's three key 
key features um, that we've worked on. One is the meeting assistant. So that is um, first surfacing annual review as a great example, which clients are due their annual review, going ahead to help schedule that review, prepping the um, advisor for the review meetings and pulling all that rich client data that we have, summarizing it nicely, hosting the review meeting, um, transcribing and then summarizing that meeting, um, whether it is in a um, annual review format or kind of a, a more generic customer um, meeting, we can summarize it. We have the transcription. We also have a, the audio. So it's a very rich place to go back and um, dig deeper if you need to into that client. And then also pulling out key actions and, and following up on those actions for the advisor. So even this, this product alone, it, it can save the advisors hours per week. It is quite incredible. And also cut down the, the need and reliance on, on the power plan and support. The second is report generation. Now, I mean, report generation is notorious in terms of the manual workload, the amount of data um, that you have to pull in. And our report generation is very much an evolution. So we started with um, a report we call the annual suitability letter. So if you, uh, your uh, advisor meets your client once a year, um, we can host that meeting for your advisor, and then we can actually generate a suitability letter based on that on that meeting. And the letter looks fantastic. It's um, very uh, has a you know headers and logos. It looks very formal, very professional. And then it's a letter to the client saying, you know, "Dear client, it was great to talk to you. This is what we spoke about. You know, goes through the key points, touched upon any regulatory points that must be covered in these annual meetings as well." The advisor gets to see this um, report, this letter, immediately post the meeting so they can make any any tweaks. We use the term human in the loop, which I think is really important, especially for AI adoption. So the advisor can see the letter, they can edit it, they can feel comfortable with it. And this is also important because the advisor needs to go on a journey of understanding AI and what it does and what to look out for. So we help guide them with that. And then the the third um, really cool uh, feature that we, we've um, released or um, kind of what I want to highlight today is the fat find. So not all, all forms are created equal. This is a key point with fat finds. And a lot of the fat finding technology is actually pretty old. Forms now are much more um, dynamic and variable. So we have a really cool fat find form that's dynamic. So if your client is married, we'll ask different questions than if they're not married, for example. But the really sick thing we do is you can host your fat find calls on our platform. And we actually take the transcription from that call and use it to populate the fat find form, which saves hours of work because a lot of advisors will have a fat find meeting um, with their client, go back, they will write the notes, maybe they give the notes to their power planner, the power planner will input um, the data into the system. We we do it instantaneously. It's a huge, huge time saving for the, for the advisor. But really, like I, I said before, it's just the first step of what we're doing with the platform. And this co-pilot will expand in terms of actually moving into the advice process and linking together the, these, the different modules and information that you have. So around uh, the financial planning, cash flow forecasting, um, around um, the portfolio review. Um, so, yeah, we, there's a lot. We have a, a, a very aggressive roadmap. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. And so just recapping, so meeting assistant, um, report generation and fact find. Just on that fact find, so I, I am totally on the bandwagon here in terms of that is, you know, being able to pre-populate or post-populate rather based on a transcript from a meeting. That is 100% one of the most useful and actually consistently accurate use cases of AI. So that is really exciting. And I'm just, just um, I noticed in when you were talking about the meeting assistant, you talked about hosting. So a client's actually joining uh, an, a call within Otto. So the, it's actually part of that, um, I guess, the strategy what you're saying is bringing that sort of end-to-end -end solution to life. They're actually joining Otto rather than a Zoom or a Teams call, for example. Yes, exactly, because that enables us to ensure um, the experience. It also just gets rid of one more thing the advisor has to pay for. Yeah. I mean, why would you need to pay for a Zoom when it can be bundled into your platform, which tells you when you need to meet with the client, organizes the meeting, holds the meeting, and, and summarizes the meeting? It doesn't make sense to then have an external provider to actually host the meeting, which at this point is, is a commodity. 
Totally. No, it's all really exciting and, and thank you for sharing that. And then when you do say like a demo with prospective, prospective advisors, is there one or two aspects or features of Otto that everyone is impressed by or maybe something that isn't used enough or flies under the radar that you're really proud of? The, the most consistent feedback we get is, wow, this looks so easy, so clean. I don't think if I, as I said this earlier, are used to using products that are built with usability and yeah. user experience in mind, which is crazy. But um, we really, everything is just, we're super aggressive. Every single element on the page has been tested, has been thought through. And we don't want to create a huge platform with all the features that's super hard to understand where, I mean, I saw one financial planning tool yesterday, they had training sessions where the advisors had to pay to attend. I'm like, this is absolutely absurd that one you even need to have in-person training to use a tool it shouldn't be that complicated and two frankly you have the audacity to ask me to pay to understand how to use your product it doesn't make sense so absolutely the usability is is beyond critical and i think the other thing that i always find is the meeting summarization the report generation because advisors are just not used to seeing this technology um, their focus obviously is on financial planning and the markets and news changes in budgets. You know that that is their focus. That when they actually get to see this technology and it's not this sort of hocus pocus magic wand, it just is extremely sensible, almost uh, efficiencies that they can bring. They really like to see that because it becomes not a conversation about AI; it becomes a more pragmatic conversation about um, helping them. Totally. That is that is wild about paying for training on software. And also the, the – I'm totally with you that advisors or just the financial planning industry in general have been conditioned to portals being standalone or just islands or in isolation. So it's really exciting to see that sort of front and backstage experience become unified. So that is – that's incredibly exciting. What's What's on the roadmap Maddie, like what's got you excited about the future of Otto and just personal financial management in general? Yeah, I think what's exciting is um, the opportunities that are coming up with an AI and um, to make these workflows just super, super clear and easy for the advisors to perform. Um, so kind of expanding into more of the advisor workflows is an absolute priority. I think also bringing, I mean, Australia is a fantastic example, the way that we've built the platform. And, you know, because we are backed by Sequoia and we have VC funding, it in some ways it can be completely location agnostic. And um, we're really focused on that client interaction. So expanding into other markets is a, a key priority for us. We actually already have some clients live in Australia. I mean, Iris obviously is a main platform in Australia and we have that connection. A lot of advisors happen to use it in the UK too. Um, so really excited for that. Would love to go to some uh, conferences, maybe during the UK winter as well, just to uh, get me through and get some sunshine. That would be uh, that would be great if that worked out. But no, I'm just extremely um, bullish in terms of the like. My goal is that an advisor uses Otto, and that day they save one hour, two hours of time. Like that is all I care about because that is showing that you've built a product that has high utility and high usability. And if you have that as the ethos, then you know the world's yours to. Amazing. No, that's very exciting to hear about the Australian opportunity there. And I think the fact that you've already got that RS or uh, X-Plan um, integration there is going to suit the majority of financial planning practices in Australia. They just have that stranglehold um, in our market. So that is really exciting. And, yeah, is there anything you've missed? Is there anything else you wanted to add about Otto before we wrap it up? A big thing about Otto is that we are bringing this new type of product. And in some ways, it's a new element of the advisor stack into the space. And I just love talking with advisors. I'm super passionate about this whole um, area. And if anybody ever wants to chat, I am I would love to. So um, you can find me um, on LinkedIn. I'm very, very open to having virtual coffee chats just to talk about the space if you're pessimistic, I love it to challenge me. I've, I've, I, I think the pessimism is completely fair. There's a lot of really bad products out there that advisors have had to deal with. I would be pessimistic too, but I think when you talk to 
um, when you come from this kind of tech first usability perspective, like we are, um, it, it does help the pessimism, right? Because we're we're trying to build kind of against that. So yeah, I just uh, would love to connect with more people. Always happy to chat. And um, the good, the bad, the ugly. I, I want to hear more about what advisors think. Awesome. I love it. And yeah, Maddie, thank you so much for your time. I've really enjoyed the discussion today. What's the best way for someone to learn more about Otto? And um, yeah, I hope to see you on the Conference Road Tour uh, next year or in terms of, um, oh, we're coming into winter now actually, so might have to get you down here. But yeah, what's the best way for someone to learn more about Otto? Yes. So just head to ottofinance.io. You can also find me, Madeline Debney, um, at Otto Finance on LinkedIn. Um, so either of those are fantastic and we if you follow us we have a lot of content um, coming up and yes hopefully I will be escaping the misery of January, February, March and hopefully coming to Australia to to some of these conferences how exciting Maddie Debney thank you so much amazing thank you